Saturday was a great experience. It was amazing to be a part of. Um, I've told a lot of people I've been I've been a part of conference championship wins, bowl game wins, come by, come from behind victories, uh, and something about Saturday was special. It was a special feeling, and you know this this season's been an emotional kind of uh, not not really an emotional nightmare, but uh, the, to see the guys come together, and you know. It, 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 two and eight, eight and two, doesn't matter. You're down 21 points in a college football game. It's an amazing thing to be able to come back, rally back, and get a good team win like we did. And, you know, there was never any doubt in our minds and our hearts. And you look on the sideline, and I mean, we were looking at each other like, dang, we got to pick it up. You know, there wasn't all sunshines and rainbows there for a while, but there was never any quit. Nobody ever pulled in or pointed any fingers. There was no, no one was ever yelling at each other. We said, look, we got to pick it up. We got to pull this thing together. I mean, there's just resilience by every every player on that team, every portion of that team. I mean, Tyler Staling, everyone seems to forget that he got pulled in that game. I don't know if we're just not talking about it. But, you know, I looked at him. I said, look, you're going to get another shot. Just relax. And, of course, he did. And I said, look, go make him show how dumb it was to pull you. And he did. He had the greatest game of the year. And um, I thought that was amazing that he was able to go through that, come out the other side, and put together the game that he did. Um, and the, on the defensive side, you know, the, they were running through us like Swiss cheese at first, and those guys set their jaws, and they said, look, there's no, no more of that. Guys like Preston Gordon, Tabari McGaskey, Alex Lyons, Emmanuel Ellerby, Destry White, just having standing guys up at the third down right at the marker and just not giving up, keep driving their feet. And at the end there, we just wanted it more. And, and it's, uh, it was really, it was really, I was proud to be a part of it. And it, nothing. I mean, we were just like, look, we got, we got to put some points on the board. I mean, we were moving the ball with ease. We looked like, you know, we, we looked like it was the easiest thing we've ever done, moving the ball four plays, we get down, we get down 50 yards. And then we make, we have a holding penalty, a missed block by me, um, and, it's, and it shuts down drives. And we, we're a team that we need to make big plays in order to get our offense going. Because if you don't make big plays and you have to take off chunks of yards, you got to be perfect and you can't make mistakes. And that's not the type of offense we are. And so we had, you know, shine, you know, pieces of brilliance, and then a couple mistakes here and there, and they stall drives, and we couldn't come back from it. And that's what happened early. You know, we get into their into their territory, throw interceptions, we get backed up because of dumb penalties. So I won't name any names, um, and uh, and it was just it's. We were doing things that wasn't our style of offense, and you know we snapped out of it and we came out and started making some big plays. Guys started you know fighting for first downs. Tyler had to take 20 carries, which is amazing to me. His, I'm surprised he didn't get broken in half. Um, but it was you know we just locked our jaws and said no more. Yeah, I guess I I, I was I was I was very caught up in it. You know, it just uh, I guess it was a quiet quiet hundred yards. <laughs> It's just uh, I knew I had a lot of catches, and I felt that I had a lot of catches. My body's killing me. I got tackled 12 times, but um, I'm not just caught up in it. I, I, we were just trying to get to 22, and you can you set your focus on some one thing, and uh, everything else gets lost in the background. Yeah, I mean Kylan's playing like a, a redshirt senior, and he, he's playing strong. He's playing confident. There's a lot of things he needs to work on in his urgency, and just you know, I mean he does have flashes of young guy mistakes. But the way he's been playing and at the, you know, the level he's playing, it's unbelievable. And I'm excited to come back and watch games and see what he's going to be doing in the next couple of years because he's just an amazing athlete. And like Coach said, I mean, he's a freshman, 215 pounds. Absolutely. First, first, play the, first play of the game, set the tone and ran three dudes over for a first down. It's easy to set up a momentum in the offense when you're throwing a bubble screen out there for a 12-yard you know, gain and three dudes are laying on their back. And the thing with Timmy is every time he runs down the field, he's running past defenders. And, you know, that's something Tyler needs to work on. We, the, these should be one-play drives, just running past defenses. And we're getting under throws and having to settle for pass interferences because guys are literally running into Timmy because he's so far behind him. And um, that's something we need to work on in these last two games. But uh, Timmy's, Timmy's talent is being... Um, not put on his display as much as it could, but he's been doing an amazing job and stepping up when he needs to step up. But uh, there's still that next step he needs to take to become just a dominant receiver because he can be. He's a physical specimen. It's the things we have to go through at Rice that a lot of other colleges don't have to go through, and I won't get into that, but it's just we have to go through a lot of challenges and adversity, and that brings teams together. And when we were around each other 24-7 during the season and during camp, you know, we're 
watching. I mean, yesterday we were watching the Cowboys game as a, as a team, and we were freaking out and having a great time. And then we went to special teams meetings. You know, we just we do everything together. You know, getting ready to go to the radio show tonight with Tabari and all the seniors and guys, and I'm probably going to all, all ride together. And I mean, we're just we're a close group, especially us seniors, just beat banged up, and I don't even know how many we got left. You know, we're falling like flies. But just the whole it it go it trickles down throughout the team, and. You know, we're a family. You know, everyone says it, and it sounds corny, but we're truly, these guys are my brothers. And everybody will say the same thing about everyone else. I got that email, I was like, what the heck? A senior day is coming up. It was a weird feeling. Um, but it just means UTEP's coming into our house, and we got to run them out of there. So, uh, you know, it feels weird. This is the last one, but, you know, it's, it was going to come eventually. So we're going to have to end it on a W. When when there was that pick six, I mean that was that was just like wow, <laughs> God, I hope it here. Yeah, it was it was hard to think. It was hard not to think. Here we go again. You know, it's just natural human nature to think, wow, that's about the worst play in Rice football history I think I've ever seen. And then we just came out and I mean we got the ball back. You know, immediately after and started moving the ball a little bit. And <laughs> I have been here longer than five years. I've been watching games with my mom since I was like four. But, but it was a bad play. And it was bad luck. And it was a bad luck play. It had nothing to do with talent or anything. It just, a ball slipped out of the hand and it was, it was ugly and it, it was just like, wow. Like, but I mean, we came back out there. I mean, you know, you can't just not go back out. And we came out and started making plays. And we started moving the ball with ease. And I was like, God, how are we down with 21-0 to these guys when we're just moving it methodically down the field. Um, and then we get put on three. And we were disappointed because we felt like we'd driven this entire field and it should be easy to get in the end zone. And so we come back out and we put in seven right before the half. And we go 10 unanswered points. And we get in the locker room and we're feeling good. Defense is talking about how their offense is slowing down and we can feel the momentum coming on our way. And we just came together. I mean, the locker room at halftime really was. It was, it was a great energy, great emotion. We were excited to get back out there. We just wanted to play more football because we felt that emotion, that energy, that momentum that we, you know, we haven't felt a lot this season. And it's why we play the game. And that's kind of where we felt it turn. And we came out at the beginning of half. And honestly, their offense started moving the ball down the field. Brian Womack had a great strip and um, put him out of field goal position. And we started moving the ball, put seven on. And we got it to 22. We only need one more. Yeah, I mean, lo losing is truly a virus, and it, you're scared that it sets into your team. And that was a fear for leaders on this team and for coaches on this team that this losing mentality can set in and grab a hold of you, and you become content with what's happening. And obviously, Saturday is not a problem for this team. And we are moving forward under UTEP, and we know that. I mean, this once we put out that our our actual talent. I mean, we made a lot of mistakes on Saturday, a lot of mistakes, and we still are able to come out and pull out a W in that kind of fashion. It just shows you that if we can put everything together and start eliminating these mental errors and these critical mistakes we're making, the product we can put out there on the field could be really impressive. And unfortunately, we can't do anything about the past, but we can do something about UTEP, and we can do something about Stanford.